preparation for a performing arts center, a new shopping venue, a vehicle screening center, two new city streets and pedestrian throughways, all in addition to the memorial and the museum. And to add even more challenges to the rebuilding, the World Trade Center has two train lines that run right through the site, the PATH train and the number one subway line, and service could not be disrupted by the rebuilding process. They serve 150,000 commuters each day, including me, um, and so it's been imperative that the rebuilding continue around that service. The memorial also shares infrastructure with other projects at the site, such as the chiller plant, which is capable of pumping Hudson River water at 30,000 gallons a minute to provide dehumidified air to the museum, the transportation hub, and other, other underground spaces. In some places, the memorial and other projects share structural steel and shear walls. As one Port Authority executive director described in uh, the project, it's like a game of pickup sticks. The construction schedule for one project can't help but impact other projects. Today, all of the World Trade Center projects are very much under construction. Because the memorial is the first project to open, it is surrounded on all four sides by construction. When people visit the site, they get a front row view to the historic rebuilding happening around them, including the new One World Trade Center, which will be the tallest skyscraper in the country. Right now, steel framing is at the 92nd floor, and the building is expected to be topped out later this year. As we describe in A Place of Remembrance, the story behind the memorial is more than just a story about urban planning, politics, and construction. It's really about people and the impact that 9-11 had on people. Throughout the book, we included the voices and quotes from people who lived near the World Trade Center, families who lost loved ones, survivors who escaped from the towers, those who responded and risked their lives, others who helped in the aftermath, and those who have been committed to rebuilding and creating a memorial. Michael Arad's beautiful memorial embodies, when put most simply, three types of stories from 9-11. Stories of loss, stories of response and survival, and stories of hope. At the heart of the story of 9-11 is the senseless loss of innocent people, people who were friends, colleagues, and families. The connections between those lives are embedded in the memorial's names arrangement, which Allison so eloquently described. One of the stories behind the arrangement is shared by two people I knew personally, Richard Ross and Stacy Sanders, who are, oh, not pictured here. Sorry. Um, Richard Ross and Stacy Sanders, who are pictured here. Richard's oldest daughter, Abby Ross Goodman, was my college roommate, and she remains one of my dearest friends. On September 11th, when I was working for Mayor Giuliani, there was very little time to think about much of anything that morning. Um, we were trying to respond to a disaster of epic proportions, figure out where to relocate the mayor's office because City Hall had to be evacuated, and how to communicate to the public during a time of extraordinary uncertainty, fear, and grief. In the early afternoon on 9-11, I called my parents from the police academy where we had relocated to check in with them and let them know that I was okay. My father told me that my friends were trying to reach me because Abby's father had, was on one of the planes. My next call was to Abby, who was in Boston. To hear her voice filled with so much pain was just absolutely excruciating. I just wanted to reach through the phone to hug her. She told me that morning that her first concern when she heard about the World Trade Center being hit by a plane was for our friend Stacy, who was Abby's best friend from high school. Stacy had just started a new job that summer at Marsha McLennan and was expecting to be engaged to her boyfriend um, in a few weeks. Stacy was at work that morning in the North Tower on the 96th floor in the very same building that Abby's dad's plane crashed into. Richard and Stacy's names are next to each other um, on the memorial. And the pain that I know that Abby's had to endure can never be ceased by any memorial. But when I told her that the name, their names would be next to each other, permanently etched in bronze, she said it was both heartbreaking and beautiful to think of them together in that way. 
Abby's and Stacy's families are forever bonded by their shared loss. And when I took Abby and her family to see her father and Stacy's name, names on the anniversary, she said she found comfort in seeing their names together. And I hope if the memorial provides some families with some measure of comfort, then this memorial will have done some good. While the memorial is a tribute to those lost, it's also a testament to the capacity of the human spirit. In the minutes, days, and now years since 9-11, so many inspiring stories of response, survival, and resilience emerged. Some of the earliest were of the first responders rushing into the towers, as well as civilians helping colleagues, friends, and sometimes strangers to safety. These stories continued through the aftermath during the rescue operation at Ground Zero. As Hale Gerland, a volunteer rescue worker who we quote in the book, said in an interview three days after 9-11, you want to find these people. It's an emergency. You want to see if you can find more alive people so you don't really think about it. You don't think about the twisted metal and about your hands and that you're hurt because it could be you under there. I think it's humanity at its best and before it was humanity at its worst. And just to stand there and to see what was once a building, especially in that smoke, it's a war and it's never gonna be the same. Hale was right, our world changed and I don't think anyone who lived through 9-11 feels quite the same. The memorial recognizes that we're forever changed by the loss of life and the loss of innocence, but it's also a statement of resilience. In the middle of the grove of oak trees at the memorial is a calorie pear tree, now known as the survivor tree. The tree had been planted